big question about this part, so I can start maybe to paint. So what I want to try, um, first I'll explain, I'm using different materials, I'm still using lots of Russian paint, and uh, more and more my students use it, so I can see like almost everywhere people use it too. Uh, it's very, it's a good quality paint, and uh, it's still very reasonable in America. When I came, they didn't sell, so I actually introduced it to Charette, it was Charette, and they actually started to sell, and now it's everywhere. Uh, it's, uh, what's it called? It's called Yarka here, there in Russia, it's called St. Petersburg. Very comfortable, uh, it's cakes. I don't know how many people painting watercolors, I'll tell me that you know all this already, but so some you, you can buy. The most people using here tubes, uh, but I always, uh, I love use cakes because it's, uh, you, you have 24 colors. Uh, set up in this paint already, so they, uh, especially saying one side or warm colors, one side or cool colors from each each paint that like you're getting from warm to green, so it's very easy to organize, it's already there. Uh, pa extra palette, uh, what you can put on. And I always, I use lots of tubes paint too, but tubes, so to like before I come today, I put some ultramarine and some indica colors because some so I know what not exists in these 24 colors, and uh, some Wither Newton colors. Uh, very, uh, pigment is very good. Pigment, I believe, some of the Russians are using the same pigment for 250 years, this company. So it's why it's all natural. And, um, it's a good cadmium, because if you can just buy a tube of cadmium, it will be the same price as like to buy a whole 24 sets. And uh, brushes, I use only squirrel for watercolor. But, uh, I know it's different, my students always Getting scared, like the killing squirrels, they're not killing squirrels. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a factory in Siberia, it's a Siberian squirrel, so they're only using top of the ears and uh, the top of the tail, and it's all handmade. Uh, you can buy uh, you know, it's a couple of good companies. I love Isabel, but they're expensive, so I'm still I'm buying the Yarka because it's actually, I know this is a real Siberian squirrel. Uh, so, uh, so, squirrel is. It's softer, um, because for lots of people in the beginning, they kind of feel not so comfortable with it. And if you're using, it's definitely sable is might you know, stronger brush. The squirrel is very soft, but it's it's taking so much water. So with technique what I'm using with, for washes and for wet on wet, you need to have lots of water on your brush. And uh, with these brushes, I can easily uh, do it for, uh, keep it for a long time. Uh, so normally they, they have very very good point and um, sorry I took the new brush when they sell it it has soap on it uh, so you, you kind of need to break the soap when you choose a brush with definitely with, like with a scroll brush in the store sometimes they you know they put in the soap so you don't know exactly what's going on but if you have opportunity to look at it, if you press a scroll brush like this and this brush, like each hair, making exactly like perfect half circle, so not not one hair sticking out. So it means a very good brush. Normally, if you're buying like any any brushes in normal store, you're pressing and all hair will go in different directions. So it means it's never going to hold the point. And with like with technique with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with any technique with watercolor, without point, I don't know how people do that. Um, and so I would, like again when I'm asking students to buy better to, again, this brush is actually surprising, you can still find them in good price. And uh, Rex, Rex Art Company actually now selling them, and some, some brush, this is number eight, and it's like they sell for like seven dollars, so it's really amazing, because Isabel brush, I got a couple same, it's exactly the same sable, handle different, it's like sixty dollars to eighty dollars, so it's, it's ten times cheaper. Um, and so it's what uh, to see again good brush. I don't want to s s put drops on the floor, but normally if you do this, very much stronger. And you can see this brush; it has absolutely perfect points. So again, so it means it's a good brush. Normally, so many brushes, but uh, again from the store, like when they're using brushes, they never get to the point. It's always like two points or like lots of hair sticking out, and again, it's very tough to paint. Um, I always use. Sponge. Uh, it's really like a racer for watercolor. So because so many people feel like if you paint watercolor, you cannot make mistakes. Really, with 
with good sponge you can fix with anything uh, and uh, easy enough. And sometimes, so you can see like this brush I take over my watercolor, uh, but again it's for uh, taking white, so if I wanted the end to take something off. When you're taking uh, with a sponge, you're not destroying paper, so you you can go back and paint again. But sometimes I want to take something, uh, so I want to get to the light again, and I don't need to paint anymore. So I can use this uh, the artificial brush or acrylic brush or the, you know, the Bristol. So it will take much more, but it's it will rip the paper off a little bit too. So you definitely don't want to touch anymore of this like, painting. But it's a very good tool to do it. Okay. Um, so like again, the scroll brush. Uh, very tricky, you need to keep it very well. So I have this special case, and I normally, like you can see all my brushes, I put in paper towels, so it's keeping perfect point. Because it's like human hair, it has a memory, and uh, if, you're, you know, if you're sleeping with your hair wet, it's, you know, okay. it's exactly what's happening with the brush. <laughs> so, but I know, like, again, with students, they always try to put in the water, so I need to go around and don't put it in. <laughs> So I want to try, so the problem is probably, uh, it's some time it will be uh, need to dry. So I brought two different, uh, two different paper. So lots of, I know lots of people before, everyone was stretching watercolor uh, paper. I'm not stretching paper for years now, and blocks working so well. If I'm using wet and wet, what I will show you today, I'm using the plexiglass. Uh, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll need to go bathroom for one second to put water on it. So I, I'm, uh, the, the traditional technique, people uh, putting it for 10 minutes in the big containers, and uh, um, sometimes for me it's the paper getting too wet, so I have no control at all, and I know like lots of uh, contemporary watercolor art is not doing it. Uh, I know this, it's funny, it's kind of technique changing a little bit. So, what I do, I'll, I'll put them in the cold water and for just on both sides, and I'll put, I'm putting it on plexiglass. I have different sizes plexiglass at home. So this way, plexiglass is almost stacking to plexiglass, and uh, it's uh, keeping it uh, wet exactly time of how I want it. And when I feel, I'll show it to like when I will put the sky and I'll put some background on my wet and wet. If it's something wrong, I can just put again to the water, you know, clean it finish until I know exactly it's right for me. And there, so normally at home I will leave it on the plexiglass, it's, but it's taking like around 40 minutes, we don't have it, so I probably will, I will take it and put it on the board and I'll finish it. So, so just a second, I'll, I'll get it. There is watercolor paper, I'm using arches. Um, uh, I love arches uh, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, people use some German paper that you can buy, you can buy here. Uh, so arches probably is uh, you know, the most flexible. Uh, um, the, the most, you know, 99% people are using cold press, what I'm using today. Uh, cold press and 140 pounds, so it's kind of in the middle. Uh, if you're working, if you're working something fast, you can use actually 90 pounds, so it's cheaper paper. You can only buy it in blocks, so you can buy it in separate pieces. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not holding for long, if you're applying layers, it's not holding so well. But if you're painting something with just one set, so you use better to use 90 pounds. 300 pounds, uh, it's almost like a cardboard. It's really good, but it's tough to paint because sometimes, uh, sometimes it's even like white spots there. So there, I, I normally I'm washing it well. And a couple times I need to do painting like 16 feet long. So uh, I definitely use 300 pounds there because 300 pounds will hold much better. And, uh, I have one of my watercolor brushes that's this big, so I can actually go and go to the big size. So just a second, I'll come back in one. Uh, you, if you can see now, when I'm doing when, what I do right now, wet and wet, it's better to stand up because when you see there, you cannot see exactly what's going on. So I don't know if, it, if you see there in the mirror. So you can see right now, so my, uh, it's almost everything wet. So the glass and the paper, same has like one layer of water on it. So I can really uh, do anything what I want. The, uh, so when you're doing this, you don't have any angle because normally watercolor, you controlling by moving your board. Yeah. So right now, if I have any angle, all my water will go down. I want it to sit on it, not go anywhere. 
And um, so I'll make some landscape today. Can you bring the chairs up behind? So using big brush, try, it's all, normally people say, oh, you're using very small, not really. Um, you'll see, I'll use some small later, but when you're doing wet and wet, you need to remember it, it's losing 50% when it's dry, so you need to be uh, very brave. It's called Yarka watercolor paint. Yeah. So now, now I get some, you know, some just uh, premium. Everything's so wet, you can see it's all like soaking there. Uh, normally, so you don't want to get this area because it's uh, it's all run back. So I kind of just will pick up a little bit of the extra water on the. Where are you standing? There's lots of mirrors. Yes. Yeah, I'll try, it's probably, I'm, I can't control it, but you, you'll see it. So now I just want to make a little bit more interesting some clouds. I see it, you know, the edge, because all I did to make it very soft, you know, so if I see the edge a little bit too sharp, I, I just can use touch with my brush. So I'll make some, you know, small, but I'll make some little bit of reflection there when it's still wet. So, and uh, just, I can make again, so I want to give some little light, light cloud, so I'm just, just using my brush. You can see there are lots of uh, paper towels. So I use tissues normally because they're not leaving any texture. The most, it's a very, very important to kind of feel what what your paper doing. So right now I can see, like, before it was absolutely wet, wet, wet. Now it's getting dry a little bit, so I, I can control right now a little bit more. So, um, so I, I want to do some little touches. But now, and again, it's not, not perfect for this, but I just want to show how to use salt to so I'll make this little snow. Um, so when you to use salt, uh, it needs to be wet like this. They're really, really wet, and it needs to be lots of pigment on. So I can see that this area right now, especially this, is a little bit darker. So you just very carefully better to use kosher salt, and um, just kind of control it. So, um, like I did uh, the brain today, but sometimes if you want to make uh, snowflakes, you know, the kind of snow falling. So, if I if I move my my plexiglass a little bit right now, it actually will make this like, little white snow falling down. But I don't want it, so I will keep it. So it will be just little flakes on its place. So now I don't need to worry about it until it dries. And um, there you'll see very soon it will it will start to observe and it's making it very beautiful. So um, now when, so this stuff needs to dry, and I will, I will put some tree, but again, so it's, it's a, some winter scene, so it's not really, I don't use any green, I just want to make some on the background little effect of the tree. So it's 
still a little bit too wet. Normally it's better to keep it uh, just a little too dry. So you can see it's just brave touches and it's creating some you know, beautiful trees, bushes on the back but I'll put some, uh, some buildings in later. Normally when I do lots of myself, same with plein too, I'm trying not to draw it, almost like just paint it, go with the paint. Because again, it's, in the beginning it's, uh, it's always just wet and wet and there I can control very carefully do all architectural details on top of it. color, you know, it's uh, obviously I'm using many years, so um, what what I use, I, like right there too, I'm always uh, playing cool warm, yeah, so I use lots of, I mix actually blue with ochre and to make, like, theoretically it's supposed to be green, but it, it's not green, you can, you can kind of control what uh, dark and light, I use lots of uh, violet to make a cooler color, so like cool, you know, blue, ultramarine, indigo, uh, violet, and some uh, golden ochre and uh, normal ochre creating this uh, uh, different uh, difference between uh, cool and warm there. Um, so this right now, I don't, I don't want to get anything more wet and wet on this, so I'll just will flip it. Okay, normally at home I will keep it to dry on it a little bit more, and I, I can have around 40 minutes working on it. So it's really the, with, with on plexiglass, so it's, it's allowed you around 30, 40 minutes. Uh, and again, if it's something like, if I don't like it, just put water on it and it's, it's actually creating, it's, it's almost taking everything off, but some paint staying there, it's always better actually to continue. But um, now I'll, I'll put it on, on the back of this plexi. So the plexi is uh, with paper on the, on the side. Try to not to make any drops. So now it's on the paper, so it dries much faster, and it's uh, it's not sticking. Normally, <coughs> if it's staying on plexi, it's actually it's not warping; it's holding it very well. Uh, on the paper, it will warp a little bit, but again, it's, it's so. Um, this need to be dry a little bit. And meanwhile, I um, uh, okay, no, the, on the different paper. So this is blocked, this is already stretched. And uh, you, you can do like, um, so you, you can apply just area of the water too. And uh, uh, I will try Normally, I show students, so I'll try to, I guess, paint like just apple uh, from my imagination, but so you can kind of see. So this is different technique. This will be washes, and uh, just for mixing. So idea is again. So I'm using. No, it's okay. I don't so uh, this is different technique. So this I, I'm going to use. It's a wash, but I will try to show so it's like Macintosh apple. So it will be lots of different red and yellow and green and ones. You know how to control it. But sometimes it's tricky to control. Uh, so again, I you know it's right now it's from my imagination. Normally I'm showing from real one. But I didn't bring up. I thought this would be faster to dry. So can you see? So again. Uh, Lots of water. You can see this brush, it's a huge brush, but again, I use it only point of it. And it's uh, it's amazing how much, like sometimes like 15 drops from this one brush you can uh, have. So and, and again, some you know, try to make this complicated stuff, so how yellow and green change into red. 
So I, the moss um, in the palette, I'm not mixing color, I'm mixing colors right there already on, on the, in my paint. And now it has like around 20 degree angle, so I can, I have full control on um, my paper. So now um, I'll get like one side, I'll get some reds. The most difficult is kind of this green to red, you know? so you can see I'm going really bright. The scary part, because I know in lots of for beginners, like it's so scary to go with bright color because it is kind of overwhelming, but uh, if it's watercolor, you need to be brave all the time. It's one of this. So the idea with my washes, what color I'm showing to students always, so you need to keep wet, wet edge always. So I'm only touching the edge of it, but you need to be very careful so it's always wet. So right now I'm mixing with lots of colors, you know, so I need to go with color to color, but all this line need to be wet. If it's drying for one second, uh, it leaves the, the mark. And if, like, sometimes you need this mark, but normally with this kind of wash, you don't need this mark. So like I'm, I'm going now, like I'm looking, oh, this is drier area. So I'm going there with, um, So red, I use, first I use scarlet later, now I'm using it's, uh, this Russian color, uh, it's much cooler red. So I'll mix it, you can see how it's going from, so green with, uh, with red making a little bit brownish, but it's making very natural apple kind of color. And again, so the most important to keep this, so nothing drying. And I didn't leave any uh, highlights, because normally when you're leaving some white, it's too edge, too sharp. So uh, that doesn't look really natural. So I will show you do it later when it's... You can see all these colors, you know, fits perfectly in, and it has direction, so the water going down, so creating a nice texture. Um, and this is not bringing it, this is the first layer, and hopefully this will drag a bit, so I'll, I'll work on both. So I'll show you. So the bottom normally a little cooler, so will be shadow. So it's the same color, but I always, the shadow reflect. So now um, you don't want to have any of this left water there, so I'm just drying my brush, touching a little bit. So you need to be careful so no one sees your touches, but so I, I, I'm watching so the water filling my, where I'm not sucking it. So, but now I need to have highlight, and I, I just will use, you know, my dry brush, and we'll make somewhere. So this creates a much uh, more realistic look. And later, if I want to absolutely white, I will use sponge when it dries. And a good, a good effect to just to make a little stencil, use sponge. So this way you can get absolutely to white exactly the size, not only for this, but for any, uh, if you want to get white later with your watercolor. Um, and some, so the top are a little bit wet still, and but I want to make this, uh, center of the apple when it's still wet, so I just will touch a little bit. So, because this way it's uh, much softer. So later I'll finish it, and but it will help. So now you can see what's happening with uh, our salt. <laughs> so you can see salt created this uh, uh, nice, like what I was telling you, because when I move it, I move paper a little bit, so salt actually did move, so it created this kind of snow effect, so it's moving from right to left. And again, if I wanted more, I can just, when I was moving, you know, I can just move paper a little bit more, and so it really will create this like, snow falling. Uh, 
and this is so it's, it's fine to touch. So now I'll, I'll show you some, some tree. Um, so tree again. And normally people use it. It's not gray. Yeah, it's, we know it's the like tree doesn't look great. But lots of my students they, they first they paint in this kind of strange color. Uh, so I'm normally mixing, you know, keeping. Uh, Purple with brownish color, so I have this Mars right here. So it's, it's making this very complicated kind of uh, brownish grayish color. And uh, so now I will see it because um, can you see? So now I need to have angle. So now I'll put again, it's uh, like around 20 degree, 25 degree. And uh, oh, it's a little wet. Because uh, this, it's again, it's like uh, you know, the, all about the what exactly happening with paper right now. This is drier, so I can because the tree will be there, so I can kind of make some shadow right now. Because shadow, if it's not perfect, it's almost better for me. So. So you can see it's, uh, you know, paper is, it's still, I still, I, I'm controlling much more, but I cannot control like what I was trying to do. So, but it's, it's making this very really, you know, interesting. So we will use it for the shadow on snow and I can make a couple. So this all, you know, they're all wet and wet. Right now, it's still kind of wet and wet. But right now, I can use uh, dry and wet a little bit because normally again I'll do it later. But right now, I don't, I don't want to use you all your time. So uh, when you do the dry and wet, so I, I want to I, I dry my brush, and I just I want to make this dr uh, the little like dry uh, grass. So I'm t t touching paint, but it's almost no water on it. So it's just dry stuff. And I want to make some this dead grass. So it's still, you, know, you can still, you, you can, I don't know if you see from there, so it's not perfect, it's still not dry, dry yet, but it's creating a very beautiful soft age. And the softer, the drier brass, the more this effect you can have. But see, like snow, uh, snow is still creating more and more and more, and some dark dots right here. So this was my the darkest area. You can see how beautiful it's happening there. It's a really beautiful texture. The soil will come out later. Uh, you don't never touch it when it's still a little bit wet because it will, it will make mess. Normally people are scared of it, but it's it's, it's all it will dis like see like this stuff right here disappearing absolutely. So you don't see any more salt. This area I put a little bit more salt. So just when it dries, it's, you know, use a brush or I just blow on it and it's all good, get out. So, um, so again, this is now I need to try a little bit more. What kind of work I'm doing? Lots of stuff I actually do painting to painting at the same time because you can see with watercolor every time you, you need to know exactly, you're controlling the wetness here. So uh, if I wait, it's taking too long. So I just do something else when it's happening. So this right now, so we, we have, um, this is dry. Um, do you ever use a hair dryer? I use, the problem with hair dryer, um, I use it sometimes, but it's destroying paper a little bit. It's actually pulling paper off the board. And uh, a couple of times I use it, and it's actually blow my paper like on two pieces, because it's, it's getting hot in one area, and it's, you know, when it's drying. It's, uh, so, but it's good when you're really in rush, and kind of, actually, it's, I used before, like, uh, you know, the new hair dryer, but now, I found this old one, this ventilator there, and it's so much better. It's because uh, it's not hot. It's uh, 
making it sp spreading around the paper. It's, 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 um, so right now we have like I have one wash, yeah. But now I want to make it sort of more realistic. You need to have some shadow area. So I just uh, the most important. So when you're doing this kind of uh, wa second wash on top, you don't want people to see where you start. So I normally am starting. And I'll, I'll have the shadow will be on, on the right. So I'm starting just with water. And normally, uh, this is a little bit smaller container than I use. I use normally the bigger containers because water is not getting dirty fast. And the clear, the better, you know, use really clear water. So it's, uh, it doesn't leave, this probably will leave a little bit marks. So just starting, I'm going on my, you know, the very light area and just applying water with no paint at all. And now I, I, will, I want to get more of this greenish, but now it's shut down. So this way, again, I'm not using, uh, I'm not applying, I'm not mixing on the palette, I'm mixing in my, on my painting. And you can see uh, the, the water from the top, can you see it? Yeah, no, sorry. Um, so the water from the top, just mixing with it, and it's going down already with different color that I can control. So it's still, you know, this greenish what I want, but it now it's getting shorter, so Apple getting much more realistic. In this area on the left, you can see right now it's a sharp line, but again, you don't want to, doesn't need to be there. So just using just clear water again. Making it a little bit cooler color and just going down. And we now we have this nice shadow on it. So again, left part still, I, I, I still see it, so I don't like to see this line. So again, using just, right now I need to be careful because if I just using lots of water, water will run to my wet area. And so right now my brush is wet, but I'm taking water out, so I'm using wet brush and just touching this edge. So I know water not going to run, but see the edge disappear absolutely, so you cannot see it anymore. So it's all, you know, it's really with watercolor, you know, it's uh, wet and wet, wet and dry, dry and wet, and dry and dry. So four different ways. Starting always good to start with wet and wet, but there you're kind of uh, doing all these combinations of different techniques. So this is definitely always, uh, it's backgrounds really ugly and you need to control them. So just pick it up this. So now it's very, you know, it's a big shot on the right. We have this highlight. Now I need to deal with top. Um, so now I know it's all dry there. So I just will make so light in this station going from the left. So I'm making shot on the right. So now it can dry. I can do when this part drying. Uh, we need to make some shadow there. But the texture was very interesting too because some, you know, like Macintosh without texture. But some I always I love to. All my work you can see it. So I do wet and wet. Second layer just light shadows, and they are always going with details. And you know, with some because details are making it kind of different in my style. So on this one I just want to put some little texture. And texture I'm using, so I get lots of water on my brush and just small small touches of paint. So this kind of not exactly Macintosh. And uh, using so easy control with uh, tissue. So I just paint it and I just touch it somewhere so I can see what's happening. So it's just a little bit interesting texture. And some of them I want to make a little darker. So now I know they're still wet. So I just will touch a couple of them. So this way it's just creating some interesting texture. Again, if it's if it was different apple, I'll take a different color. Um, and shutter right now it's still wet, so I cannot touch this. So hopefully I can touch this. 
So first, I want to put some kind of landscape. I will do. It. I will make it to Russian landscape. Um, so I will use so brushes. Uh, the brushes number is confusing because uh, American number is different from European numbers, and Russian number is different from European numbers, and Chinese different from Russian. So uh, it's because it's met metric and inches and all this. So. Um, so in Russian size, uh, this is the big one is number eight. This one is number four, and the smallest one number three. The more I never use, I have a couple of small ones, but normally number three is my detail brush because it's uh, when it gets smaller, there's no water on the brush, so you really cannot control. It's kind of uh, and this one is uh, you know it's, it's got lots of water, but you can see it's up to the perfect point. Um, so I will make this like silhouette because we have the light on the back. So. Does people see in the mirror? I don't know if, if I'm covering it. Uh, I'm forgetting sometimes, sorry. So I'll make it just some darker color and hopefully it's dry enough. This again, you know, you can use. Uh, it's it's only a little bit mark, but uh, I, I will cover it later. With so normally I can feel paint by touching with finger, um, and it feels it is still a little bit damp, so I'm kind of worried. So now I'm. So I'm creating this my tree. And this right now, so I'm using wet and dry. So I'm just you, you know, because again this brush holding a lot, so I can just move. I don't want to get the same color everywhere, so I I'll mix a little bit in. You know, I need to match it with my shoulder. <laughs> so it's still the edge a little bit uh, soft, uh, but I, I, I will do it because I don't want to spend lots of time. Um, so I'm, I'm just using a little bit more pigment. So hopefully I'll fix it. Each tree has a, you know, different characters. So normally again, like if you like I did, I did so many plein air, so I'm kind of, I can create a tree from my memory. But normally, like I always recommend, like to just look on real tree and uh, so so interesting. Each tree, like a human, it's very interesting characteristics. And so the bottom little bit hairy right now. But, um, Better to do it when you're trying to do something like small like this, um, thin lines go from top to bottom. Top and the bottom of the paint right now perfect. Um, it's dried, so I can I can easily control there. But I'll uh, I'll try to use it for my purposes and maybe making some little bush next to it so something so it's we don't see. That. What I do, you can see, like I put lots of color, and now I'm just using water, so it's making this beautiful kind of foggy effect. And again, the, the 
bottom, I don't want to see it at all, so I can just touch with tissues. And sometimes, if you want to have texture, so you, you, you can use not tissue, but any different you know, paper, like toilet paper. I'm using lots of different uh, paper materials, and sometimes like shoes, because you can make some interesting texture with them too. Um, all the plastic plexiglass is good, so you can put plexiglass on top of something wet, and you can, it can create this beautiful texture too. So this way it's kind of tree standing. And so I don't want to get top sharp, so again, I'm just using water touching it, so it's all just created as beautiful soft. Do you ever use a spray bottle to really, really wet? I, I, I do, but I told you I'm using more on the paint. I'm spraying the paint than paper. Because the spray bottle, sometimes it's, uh, I'm, you, I'm losing control because I don't know exactly which area is wet. And with, uh, with this, I, I know exactly where to go with my brush. So, uh, so now this area is dry there. So I'm trying to do this on the on the back. So again, I'm, I'm making much sharper uh, edges and bottom just disappearing to the fog. And now I can put some some uh, buildings on the back of this area. So I did you know, bright, and now just with water, making all the bottom disappear. So it's so this way it's kind of just sticking out of the some landscape on the back. Deal with this, <laughs> and it's still a little wet there. Um, the shot is probably dry now, so I can just. Just a little bit more details, and again, I don't want to see any beginning of lines. So I'm just going with the water and uh, make them dis disappear. So the salt will, will disappear and there's still a little bit there next to the water. Dice, I use. Uh, I use it for uh, silk, you know, so like more for theater because I can make this. Uh, you know, it looks exactly like watercolor, but it's definitely easy to deal with dice on uh, silk. So I'm just so when it just when it's drying, so I can make shot again. So shot a uh, obviously. In this situation, I'm keeping so it's like a warm light, so shadow is cool. So 
not to make this kind of stuff. So normally when I paint at home, I just putting tracing paper everywhere, so you never touch your paper. Uh, and it's it's such a good tool because it's waterproof and very easy to work with. Definitely when you're working on something painting with, with lots of details, so everything covered. Because all this, uh, it's water on my hand from the paper towels. And, and a shot is better to paint so with a couple layers too. So what I'm doing right now, I started lighter, I'm getting darker, but it's still some area I know it's not dark enough, so it's much better to go with second layer, just a little bit darker next to the object. And again, so I'm controlling just moving paper around, so right now it's a little, uh, little bit too much water, so just touching up. Sometimes you feel, oh, it's so, it's it's a good area. It's it's so dark. I want to keep it, but it's better to go second time later because when it dries, it will dry with a big ugly mushroom. Uh, so it's better to to go one more time on it. If it dries, I can show you with sponge. So the sponges uh, is always better to use natural sponges. Artificial ones, so they're trying to sell, they're not working well. They're destroying paper too. And natural sponges, you can buy in art store or I'm buying in the pet store because it's so much cheaper and I'm buying this big sponge and cutting the area what I like. Um, so, and just, so I want to make it lighter so you can see, so I can clean it to absolutely white paper and it's not leaving any marks and it's you can easily work with it so it's, uh, and it's making it's if you, if you want to make something soft so right there I can see it's still kind of like still to mistake looking so but later I can just with sponge I can just take it off absolutely the whole area and it's also perfect area. It's not going to be perfect, sorry, but it's because uh, I cannot make perfect control, it's still um, getting out a little bit. So I'm making an architectural details right now going up. So I'm trying to make this uh, some kind of European building with uh, under the snow. white area what I left before, I especially left in you know, this kind of shape, so it will be some interesting shape here. Thank you. 
control bar. Right now. A little bit, yeah, a little bit messier than normally I'll do it because again, it's I need like probably ten minutes to dry it because you can see uh, this. I cannot have full control; it's still a little bit wet there. But the idea, and normally, it's so like after this, so again, I will dry it a little bit more, and I can just go again more and more to details. Yeah, but I, I, I kind of like to keep it still right there. And I, this I don't like, but again, it's. Uh, I can probably I can show this patch. It's kind of interesting. You can what you can fix. Um, so you can see that this is kind of uh, it's called it's it's round. It's round because I, I know it's wet. Uh, but no, I can try just. You can see all this mess disappear, and I can easily control it and put something else. So, with a sponge, it's a good tool. It's only you need to know, like, again, how wet, when to use it, and if it's paper very wet, keep it dry. If it's paper, like right now, it's very dry, so I use it, you know, zip up them. But if it's too much water, it can uh, lose the control. So, so I, I hope. If you have any questions, sorry, it's like a...